Hello and welcome to the session of volt pretension on 20 volt with external force in hypermesh optostruct user profile. So in this session we will see an introduction on volt pretension, then uh, what is 1D volt pretension and finally an example on 1D volt pretension in hypermesh. So let us see an introduction on volt pretension. So uh, pretension is nothing but the preload, uh, is a cre tension created in a fastener when it is tightened. So our uh, tensile force in the bolt creates a compressive force in a bolted joint known as clamp force. So this clamp force is uh, in an unloaded bolted joint assumed to be equal and opposite to the preload. So we have few benefits of the bolt pretension that is a rigidity of the joints, no slip in services, no loosening of the bolts due to vibrations. We have better performance in fatigue, our tolerance or for the fabrication is better. Uh, so pretension shortens the working part of the bolt by removing the certain length of the bolt and from the active structure so each bolt shortened by uh, some value that is uh, delta L uh, which means the overlapping uh, to applied force so it is because the amount of uh, nut movement due to the given force now let us see a 1D bolt pretensioning follows a specific approach for a bolt pretension phenomena. So in 1D bolt pretension, uh, the bolt is modeled using 1D elements and a beam or a rod element represents the selection of the bolt where pretension will be applied. So uh, it is recognized that for a straight bolts, uh, from the viewpoint of balance of the force, it does not matter what location of the removal of material happens in the bolt. So therefore, uh, instead of uh, simulating the precise interaction between the nut and bolt, uh, pretension is handled within the length of the bolt. So uh, the pretension is implemented in OS with the help of MPCs. So a transverse uh, section of the beam is identified, that is the cross section, uh, along which uh, it is uh, cut and the duplicate grids are controlled by multiple constraints, that is MPC, and a scalar point, that is this point, to simulate the pretensioning effect. So uh, additionally, a scalar point, uh, that is S point, is automatically created uh, to act as an independent grid point and a pair of self-balance uh, pretension force is applied on the both ends uh, at the cut within the newly created S point. So uh, the force is acts on the both side of the grid point, uh, one on the dependent grid and one on the independent grid. And the specific pretension force is internally applied to the uh, S point and it transfers to duplicate grid point uh, via MPCs. And MPC control the movement of a newly created duplicate grid point and scalar point. Uh, so it is based on uh, some uh, equation. So uh, U S point equal to U T G minus U I G. Uh, that is. Uh, US point is the displacement for the independent scalar point, UDG is for the displacement of the dependent grid point and UIG represents the displacement for the independent grid point and the reaction force on the scalar point due to an enforced displacement of uh, US point can be shown equal to the force acting on the dependent or the indi independent grid point. So this can be shown in the, the equation. So F of S point equal to f of dg minus equal to uh, negative of f of ig uh, it depends on the direction of the forces and where s f of s point is the total reaction force on the independent scalar point that is s point uh, then uh, where f of dg is the force acts on a dependent grid point f of ig is the force acts on independent grid point and with this uh, uh, the application uh, the static analysis is performed to calculate the deformation of the structures the result of such analysis is the overlap uh, that is delta L across the cut portion of the beam uh, which is equivalent to the distance uh, that the bolt would move relative to the cut so in this uh, uh, figure we can see the bolt is cut at uh, imaginary location um, and calculate the delta L then uh, uh, then uh, it is reconnected at the, the cut location. Uh, this represents the shortening the working length of the pretension bolt and uh, on
on which the nut has been tightened with the bolt tensioning. So uh, additional work, working loads are also applied um, on the FEA model and FEA solution is performed. Uh, so for the subcase uh, information entry, uh, we have pretension which identifies the pretensioning force or the adjustment and it is to be activated in the static subcase. Uh, then uh, stat sub pretension, it identifies the static uh, subcase uh, that creates the pretension uh, bolts uh, which are to include in uh, the present uh, subcase. In nonlinear path of dependent problem, uh, the sequencing of the pretension can be combined with the, the continuation of a nonlinear subcase. Uh, so, uh, for a nonlinear subcase controlled uh, by CNT and LSUB with the combination of stats of pretension. So, this controls the sequence of uh, pretension and uh, CNT and LSUB controls the sequence of nonlinear aspect of loading scenarios. So, uh, we can uh, talk more about uh, CNT and LSUB later. Now, let us see an example on only bolt pretension in hypermesh of this table total. So, opening hypermesh. So, this is our model we are going to consider uh, for this tutorial. So, this model is meshed with uh, 2D elements. One end of this plate is uh, uh, constrained in all six degrees of freedom, and uh, one end of this plate is uh, external force jacked on the other end of the plate. Uh, also, uh, so the spider of RB2 elements are created on both the plates and a C beam is between create, uh, created between them. Uh, now let us uh, review all the components uh, for whether material or pro material and property assigned with uh, the component or not. So as you can see the material and property uh, are assigned already. Now uh, let us uh, review the context which is predefined in this model. So, and the blue surface uh, in the contact defines the master surface and the red surface defines the slave surface in the contact. Uh, now let us uh, review all the uh, component uh, collectors. So the external force is uh, acts on the, the plate. Um, then we have the constraints on the other, other end. Uh, so and also an allowed card uh, which is used for uh, in creating incremental output results and NL param card which is used for activating nonlinear solution method. Now to create uh, the bolt pretension, go to tools and then uh, the pretension manager. So in the pretension manager, to create a 1D bolt pretension, click on add 1D bolt and select the bolt uh, that is C beam, click on proceed. So it will uh, capture the uh, element ID, um, then uh, set the load type as force and now uh, create new load collector, uh, define the load magnitude as 10,000 and uh, leave the other field as default and click on OK. So this will create one uh, Tension force of 10,000 Newton on the bolt. Uh, now to create a load strip for the bolt pretension, right click on the model browser, click on create and set the load step. Let us uh, give a name as pretension. Set the analysis as nonlinear static analysis. Select constraint under the SPC. Select NL param load collector as uh, NL param field. Define a pretension load collector under the pretension. And then assign NL out card under the NL out field. And now create a load step for external load. Similarly, set the nonlinear uh, static nonlinear static analysis in analysis type and define the constraints. Under the load option, define external force. Similarly, define the NL param card and NL out card. Uh, under the stats of pretension, define the first load case that is the pretension. 
So uh, the stack sub pretension is used for locking the bold pretension in preceding load case. Now, now uh, search for the subcase option and check the CNTNL SUV as our SCID and define as the first load case. So CNTNL SUV is used for continuous nonlinear solution uh, from previous nonlinear solution subcase. To define the output request, uh, go for the uh, global output request. So click on Control F and type global output request. This will create one global output request card. So under this global output request card, check for the contact course option and set the format as HTD. Similarly, for the displacement. A search for pretension bolt and set the option as opti so uh, this uh, command will write down dot plt file which contain the data on uh, dot uh, pretension force and pretension uh, adjustment value now search for the stress and strain set the format as std Now uh, type param card in search window. Search for param. This will create a param card, and under the param card, search for the check limit. Set the option as no, so the opt uh, struct follower will not check the element quality for this model. Now export the uh, .fm file and run this uh, .fm file in OptiStruct solver. So I have already solved this file and load the results in Hyperview. So opening Hyperview. So this is the displacement plot for uh, this model. So as we can see, the displacement value, uh, the maximum displacement value is uh, five point two nine meters per mile. Now let us check for the maximum uh, stress value. Uh, select the one mass uh, stress type. Select the average as click on apply. So we can see the stress value is about now uh, check the stress value in one day. Search for the stresses in one day. And click on apply. So the maximum stress is uh, stress is on four is one to six. Now check the stresses uh, stress and displacement value in uh, this external load case. Change the load case from external. Select the all component. So for the second load case, the maximum is uh, 1.3. Uh, similarly, check for the stresses. So you can see the maximum uh, stresses was 8.36 ampere. Uh, now, uh, when we define the retention bolt command in uh, output request, so optician. Uh, we will uh, write down the .plt file. So now opening the .plt file in the pad. So this file uh, we write down So here uh, for the load vector of one for the first load case that is retention. So it write down the uh, element ID. Uh, then uh, it write down Scalar point ID, uh, then the force increment, uh, then the adjustment, then the total force, and the total adjustment. Uh, so, as we can see here, the incremental force and the total force is same, that means the first load case is the So, we applied the uh, thousand force. Here we can uh, proceed to the 
total force applied. Uh, similarly, for the, uh, the external force, it is all uh, written down here. So, as we can see here, all the values are written down. Thank you very much for watching.